Good night, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in divine consciousness. Hello, beautiful people. How's it going? Wow, 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 wow. Day 13, we are moving and grooving, right? Um, Thank you for joining me for 31 days of self-coaching, self-reflection. I was thinking, um, somebody asked me why did I do this, and I know that some people uh can't always get to one-on-one coaching and even though this can't replace uh coaching it will just give people some thoughts uh some things to jog their ideas in their mind and i will have a whole 31 series on sale for black history month that you can download and uh, how to be wealthy and well-rested in ancestral healing, reflections for your soul so that you can have reflections and self-coach yourself through for 31 days. And um, yeah, and I have the link to that if people want to get started early on that for Black History Month for a purchase. And it's just to self-coach and expand yourself when, you know, you don't have the resources because it was the free resources that helped me, right? It was the definitely the free resources that helped me until I can invest in those resources. You know, every coach that I invested in, every elder that I invest in, I utilize their resources first and then I made the great investment. Then go bounce all over the place. That's something that I stuck with it, with their methodology until it was able to grow me, right? So uh, free resources help. So if you don't know who I am, I'm Yai Joyce. I am a wife, mama, priestess, uh, spiritual coach, counselor, all those titles, dot, 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 dots, right? I help my clients in toxic habits, grow their joy, transform their businesses, and improve their lives and their wealth and well-restedness. I use a combination of unique coaching methods of ancestral healing, astrology, uh, psychology, and spiritual um, counseling, and um, pair that all together and make um, a unique coaching style of my own that I call living in joy and wealthy and well-rested method. If you would like to know how I can help you grow in your joy, your wealth, and your well-restedness, you can find out more about my coaching and services at yayijoyce.com, Y-A-Y-I-J-O-Y-C-E.com. That is Y-A-Y-I-J-O-Y-C-E.com. So we're in day 13 and we are being called to have this self-reflection of are we givers and not be takers? Giving as a path to success. Don't just take, give. Do you take more than you give or do you try to do it in equal measures? Why is being a giver paying off better? I had this little challenge within my Patreon group, right? And this little challenge was this. Um, One of my coaches was like, no, you know, you have to do away with all of those um, memberships. He's like, that's just taking reach like $30 and they want a month and they want um, devotionals every Friday, recordings, podcast for $30. It's just like, it's costing you more. It's costing you more to produce than they're actually giving. She's like, they're taking, right? And I did this little experiment and it was, okay, if you felt that out of all the information, all the content that I gave you was enough, I'm closing down this portion of the membership. If you thought that it was enough, you do not, um, if you thought it was enough, thank you. And we're switching the format and we're switching the way that we do things. But if you don't think that I give in enough, you can uh, utilize the money that you had used for credit for like a reading or whatever, right? 
most people utilize the credit. Most people, after all the content that I've given them, all the information that I've given them, less than 0.1% said thank you and what you gave was enough. And she was right. People just take. Now, all the content that I given and gave was way more than what many of them contributed and paid. And they still wanted more. And they still wanted more. It wasn't, oh, no, you did enough. Thank you. No, well, I want this discount. No, yeah, give me more. Yeah, I want to use this for coaching. Yep, I want to use this for reading. No matter what you gave us, still, I want more on top of that. And we are in this society where spirit is asking us to really look at how much we take. Why people who give more than they take often receive benefits that exceed their personal costs. Whether it's at work, whether it's in your ministry, in marriage, or even in friendships, in life, it always pays off to be a little selfless. Even though I give, and sometimes I had to realize, because I used to say, God, what, where, where, where is it for me, right? I realized that Spirit gave me in so many other ways. It paid off in the long term. I would go to a restaurant and people would say, pay for my food. Or I would go somewhere and someone would pay for my gas. Or, you know, in a, just random acts of kindness, right? And And sometimes it doesn't come from the people that you're giving to. And I had to learn that lesson myself, right? We are in this energy where it's asking us, the rewards are giving more than you get. In truth, giving rarely pays off. Trust me, I know. I'm in ministry, right? It rarely rarely pays off, right? Because being in ministry, doing this work, it's usually out of my own pocket, out of my own accord, right? And... I coach and I counsel and do strategy for businesses and corporate. That's how I make my money. I don't make money off of this. But most of a life isn't a zero sum, right? Givers take some time to build goodwill. But eventually their reputation and their network builds their success in a virtual and a virtuous cycle way. Right? Um, giving is value. In the majority of the world, even takers said giving is important, but they wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it. But, you know, sometimes givers are afraid of giving because giving is seen as a sign, as a, as a, a sign of weakness right? Especially in the workplace, when people perceive the workplace as a zero sum, I'm not doing their work or I'm not helping so-and-so. They can do it themselves. And other people, again, are matchers. Well, I help you if you do X, Y, and Z, right? So this energy that we're in, ask us, if you are not as happy as you want to be. Ask yourself, are you a giver, a taker, or a matcher? And a challenge that I have for you is selfless, are you a selfless giver or otherish giver? Otherish givers are smart and strategic, very manipulative, very narcissistic in a way about the giving. While they just as much as givers as the selfless givers, they learn to successfully navigate the world with the matchers and takers so others don't take advantage of them. So they give because they're like, okay, but, you know, they're going to get something out of it, right? They're going to get something out of it. And one of the things that 
divine consciousness and this energy alignment is asking us to do as we are all self-coaching, coaching and growing in joy is how to be a successful giver. How can you be a successful giver? So I have a challenge for you. A five minute favor. Do other people's small favors or go get a gift for someone that takes you or give a gift, whatever it is. It doesn't take you any more than five minutes. It doesn't take you any more than five minutes to do that, right? And if you don't have money, it can be giving feedback, writing a review, even at your job, doing quick favors for coworkers or friends, you know, ask coworkers or someone on your job or friends, uh, do you need help um, this weekend? Do you need help with anything or do you need help? How can you sprinkle random acts of kindness throughout your day, throughout your week? Or can you just give a whole bunch in one day, in one chunk? Whatever is most effective. This is this is my spiritual psychology side coming out. Chunk giving, giving big amounts or chunk giving. Actually, research has showed it leaves a bigger psychological boost on the soul for the person that has gave as well as the other person feeling appreciated and and meaningful, which motivates them to continue to be a giver, right? And it also motivates the other person to continue to um, do what they're doing, right? So how in this 2022, are you going to be a successful giver? That's the radical honesty moment that I want you to take. How can you be a successful giver this 2022? That's your self-coaching reflection of the day. I hope that this has blessed you and filled your life with absolute joy and grace. Be well, guys.